Well, guys, welcome to another episode of Millennials in Ministry. I'm your host, Aaron V. Lashley, and I am privileged, truthfully honored to have Jasmine Tate on the show today. She's a singer-songwriter from Fort Worth, Texas. So, Jasmine, welcome to the show, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Honored to be yeah. with you. For sure. So for those who are joining that may not know a lot about you, can you give us a little bit of background as to well, where you come from, how long you've known the Lord, and how you got into making music full time? I'm assuming that's what you do right now. Yeah. So uh, I see my, my friend Trey from high school on there uh, talking about his song. <laughs> he said, I'm from Ohio, which is true. That's a good place to start. Um, I was actually raised in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I, my dream was to be in corporate America. Uh, I wanted to work for uh, BET, MTV, VH1, something like that. And just kind of yeah. be able to be a voice in the media and shift the media monster from behind the scenes was my dream. And, mm -hmm. uh, and basically, it's a pretty crazy long story. But what ended up happening was I went to college for that. And right before I started college, my freshman year, uh, I started getting prophetic words about doing music. Uh, I don't know any other way to say it. Uh, you know, I was, people started having dreams about me on the stage playing the guitar and singing. Wow. I would be at churches and pastors would call me out from the back of the room and say, hey, uh, you're going to be on the stage singing, playing the guitar. And when you sing, people wow. get set free of things. And, um, and that was crazy for me because I didn't play the guitar or sing at that time. So I was like, this is really wild, you know, like, I don't, I don't do this. So it's not even <laughs> what I want to do. I want to be behind the scenes. I want to be right. in corporate America. Uh, that was, that was my dream. And, and uh, so after those words and those kind of moments started happening, uh, I, I went to one of my mentors house one day and I just kind of let her know everything that was going on. I was freaking out about it. And she said, Jasmine, God's trying to invite you into part of your destiny. She said, you can either say yes to God and he'll show you what to do. He'll give you what you need to do it. Or you can say no and he's going to use somebody else to do it, but you need to decide. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, man, that's pretty intense. And so yeah. I said yes to the Lord. And um, about a few weeks after that, my mom, I left the guitar with me when she dropped me off at college. And I actually went to college on a full ride scholarship to, to play basketball and uh, so when she left the guitar with me, I'm like, that's the last thing I'm going to be doing with my time. I'm here yeah. to play basketball and get my degree, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but little did I know all of that that was going to happen. And so about two weeks after that moment happened, the Lord began to teach me how to play the guitar in my dorm room um, to the point to where my roommate walked in and was just like, you play the guitar? And I was like, I don't know. This is crazy. <laughs> and uh, so doors just started opening for me to play, lead worship wow. places, and do music and um, kind of the last piece of the story is I, I thought if you're a Christian and you do music, your only option is to be a worship leader or like a K-Love artist, you know, sure. CM or gospel, <laughs> those are your only options, you know? Right. And, uh, right. and so what happened was I was, I was doing, I was leading worship and then the Lord started to give me songs that I noticed weren't for just the Sunday morning mm. Corporate moment. I knew they were more, for more than that. They were for something else, you know. And mm -hmm. so I said, "Well, God, what do you want me to do with these songs?" And I felt like he he led me to play this open mic on my college campus. And so I went and did that. And when I went to play, uh, you know, I sang my song, closed my eyes, and when I opened my eyes, the majority of the people in the room were crying. And uh, wow. I I thought to myself, "Man, I must have been really bad. Everybody's crying." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I got off the stage and. These girls came up to me and again, they were weeping and they said, while you were singing, we felt chill bumps and we felt things happening inside of us. We've never experienced that before. What wow. was that? And I was like, oh my gosh, it was just a major paradigm shift where I realized, yeah. man, God wants to encounter people, not just in the church. And that's mm. what they experienced through this song uh, that wasn't necessarily a worship song, but like they yeah. just encountered God in a, in a really unique way. And so I just started going to open mics and bars and coffee shops and just kind of saying, wow. well, God meet people like this every time, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would take friends with me and we would just go to these places and God started showing up, you know, we would, people started giving their lives to Jesus in bars and getting healed and crazy things yeah. would happen outside of the four walls of the church. And wow. it was just a game changer for me. And, uh, and that's kind of where everything started. So, yeah. That's so cool. Um, like probably, Eight months, nine months ago, I was at our young adult Bible study, and a friend of mine, Taylor, uh, 
she was like, have you ever heard of Jasmine Tate? I'm like, no, I haven't. She's like, you, you gotta look her up. Cause she's like, I just feel like you just like, you just remind me so much of her. And I feel like you're going to really love her, her worship or music. And I'm like, and she kept telling me and I was delaying, like looking you up and actually listening and like, you know what I mean? And doing yeah. research and all. And when I finally looked you up, I was like, Oh my gosh, like this woman is phenomenal. Oh. And I really, really am inspired by your social because I love the way that you break down the songs that the Lord gives you mm. line by line. It's a line in your song, but then there's such a story and a background of scriptures and just yeah. revelation that mm -hmm. God has shown you. And I really just, I can tell that your heart for the Lord is so pure and so fiery and it just comes across. Like I've never met you, mm -hmm. but hello, I'm Aaron, you know, like, <laughs> I, but just even over the, on the internet, how that comes across. So first of all, thank you for that. And then two, I want to ask you, what have been some of your favorite lines and some of the songs the Lord has given you? and why oh that's a loaded question <laughs> um okay uh two lines come to mind right off the back um the first line that comes to mind is god's been good a long time um that's a, a lyric from uh the last the newest song that i released the, the single called better days and um yeah uh that line means a lot to me uh, I think because it's just a, it's a fresh revelation for me personally, so it kind of mm -hmm. it, it resonates with me a lot right now. But the idea yeah. of that line, God's been good a long time, is um, it's just God's faithfulness. You know, it is mm -hmm. the idea of this. The whole purpose of that song is about helping people learn God's heart concerning seasons mm -hmm. and how seasons shift, how seasons change. And um, that that line is implying that God has been doing seasons for a long time. So mm -hmm. like in his goodness, he's been faithful to the seasons, you know, like if you just look at the weather, for example, the winter, fall, summer, spring, you know, yeah. uh, those have been happening since Genesis. Uh, like mm -hmm. he, in Genesis, it talks about how we set the seasons into motion and he hasn't missed them. He hasn't missed the season. I feel like he misses the seasons in Texas sometimes because I didn't get fall here this year, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Uh, but like he doesn't miss seasons like they don't yes. they don't stop happening uh winter keeps coming back around the summer keeps mm. coming back around the fall yeah. keeps coming back around and so if he can be faithful to make the seasons come back around over and over again then why not trust him with our own life with the seasons yeah. that change and that shift that you know sometimes we feel like we go through the valley and it's just the idea of like no no, no like don't be dismayed uh the season will change uh, mm -hmm. the mountain will come back around, the, the morning yeah. will come again, you know, like, uh, because he's been good a long time. Why would he stop wow. now, you know? Um, so that's the idea mm -hmm. of that song, of that line, yeah. God's been good a long time. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And uh, I think the second one that comes to mind is, uh, it's actually a song that hasn't been released yet. It's called Simply Jesus. Uh, I mm -hmm. hope to get it out before the end of the year, for sure. Okay. We're working on it. Uh, but the, this, line, the, this line of the song says, uh, don't come to my church if my life doesn't preach. Let first mm -hmm. encounter with kingdom be me. And um, it's just saying, you know, like, I, I don't have a right to invite you to come to my church if you didn't encounter the kingdom through my life. Uh, wow. Like, if, if, if my life didn't preach Jesus to you, if my life didn't preach the kingdom to you, the way I loved you, the way I, the way I was present with you while I was with you, yeah. uh, then yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't deserve the right to invite you to my church. Like mm -hmm. the, the first encounter with kingdom needs to be our, ourselves, you know, yeah. our people, Jesus consistently invited people to him, to his yeah. life, to who he was so good. first. You know so what I'm good. saying? He said, Hey, come yep. follow me. So his, yeah. his life had to be worthy of following, you know? And mm -hmm. so if we're saying we want to be like Jesus, then we have to be able to say to people, Hey, let's do life first mm. come follow me come engage in life one-on-one -on -one, life on life uh and then i can invite you to my church but if i can't invite you into my life first then i don't have a right to invite you to my church wow <laughs> i don't even want to ask you any more questions can you just talk like i would just like that is that is really really good i really love that reminder that christ always invited he invited us to himself 
you know, and that our lives should bleed the love of Christ yes. and the gospel and the truth. Um, it's just so good. Thank you for sharing that. I watched a video that you released on Valentine's Day that just spoke to me um, as I was researching for this, preparing for this interview. And you were talking about a relationship you had been in for like two weeks. Yeah. And then the Lord spoke to you so clearly that this is not your husband. You need to break up with him. And so you you did it, you know, um, out of an act of obedience. And he was upset. And, you know, but you said something that spoke to me right now in this present season for mm. me. And you yeah. said, when it comes to God's goodness, if you don't believe when God asks you to either let go of something or he removes something from your life that you thought was really good and it goes and you don't believe that he will either bring something else or lead you to something that's better because he is your father, yeah. will have something else for you. You know, that reveals something in you of what you believe about God. Yeah. And I was like, Dang, that's so true. That's so true because for me right now, things that have left my life that I wish were still there, but I know it's God orchestrated. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm having a hard time believing that you're good. Yeah. That yeah. you're good, like for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you, like, I guess I'm asking you now, once you have that epiphany or that realization, what is your encouragement when you realize that there's an area in your life that you're struggling to believe that God is good in? Yeah. What would you say? Man, that's a, that's a good question. I think if I just bring it back to the example that I was giving in that specific clip, uh, yeah. for me, you know, that, that example, which, you know, it all applies to all of us in so many different areas <laughs> of our life. We all are always yeah. encountering that and being, uh, that's always being revealed and exposed to us, you know. Uh, but mm. in that specific example, um, th what I didn't, I didn't believe that God was good enough to um, to bring my husband, to bring mm. uh, the right man of God into my life. You know, I didn't believe yeah. that he was good enough to do that. And so the lie was that I had to hold on to what I had mm. instead of trusting that God could I, the lie was that I believed that I was better than God, that I was mm. gooder than him, you know, that yeah. I could control that and do mm. better than he could with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so for me, after that moment of like letting that relationship go and communicating that and having that whole moment, what I had to do was go back to the Lord and first like confess to him, God, mm. I question your goodness. Uh, mm. I, I, I doubted your goodness. I doubted who you are. Will wow. you help me see yeah. you for who you are in this area of my life? Uh, there's been a, uh, there's a, there's a breach here. There's something, there's a gap here of a, mm. a facet of your nature that I don't understand in its mm. fullness. And I need you to help me. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I think it is uh, perfectly okay. And, and I think it's what he expects of us for us to come to him and be honest with him and say, I don't understand this part of your nature. I don't mm -hmm. understand this facet of who you are. And I honestly can't without Holy Spirit illuminating that part of who you are, God. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so it's that invitation yeah. into asking God, okay, help me believe you in this area mm -hmm. of my life. Uh, yeah. Show me in the word uh, your faithfulness in this area. Show me, show me who you are, you know? Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's not necessarily... Um, Sometimes it's not that we just don't, you know, it's, it's not that like we just don't love him and we just don't like, we don't believe him. Like most yeah. of the time it's like, no, we love him. We believe, <laughs> you know, we, we know he's good, but there's this right. little lie that's crept in in these specific mm -hmm. areas of, in our life about him. Um, yeah. And so regarding relationships, I had to go back and confess that there was a gap there and mm -hmm. ask him to show me the gap. Where, where, where did that happen? Uh, where did I allow that lie to slip in? Was there something, yeah. where did that lie get in first? You know, like what was the moment that I believed mm. that you weren't good in relationships? Did it come through my mom, my parents, my family? Did it come through mm. uh, something in that relationship specifically? Is it something that the media taught me about relationships that I've I made agreement with and believed, you know, like, um, anyway, I could go on about that, but I, I think it is the place of vulnerability with the Lord of us being honest about those areas and taking mm -hmm. it back to him and saying, can you help me with this? Wow. 
It's so powerful. It's so good. Like, I just feel like, I feel so like, um, I'm just grateful to be having this conversation right now. I don't even have words, truthfully. Truthfully, that's so good. I'm going to go back and watch this just for me. <laughs> like, I'm glad everyone else is watching. But it's really, really good. Um, wow. Uh, thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, that is really, really absolutely. good. Absolutely. I'm going to go back and watch it for me, too. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, that's one of my favorite things about those videos and, and even the songs. You know, people think, oh, you're saying this video or you're singing this song because um, you're done with that. Or like, mm -hmm. that's something that you've completely got figured out. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times God uses my songs to minister to me or mm -hmm. videos to remind me of things. Yeah. Like, you know, I go back and watch a video and be like, ah, yeah. oh, Lord, help me get that. Yeah. You know? Thank you for that yeah. revelation. But I needed to like get in there. I needed to be loving yeah. in my spirit, you know. Um, yeah. So I'll go watch it too. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. What are some things for yourself that have just some either disciplines or practices that have really helped you over the years and walking with the Lord that you just hold on to that just keep you close to his heart yeah. for you? Yeah. So two things immediate came immediately came to mind. Um, the first thing is, and it's funny, uh, I, I moved to Fort Worth. Uh, a year ago, it'll be a year on the mm. there that I moved to Fort Worth uh, to help with a church plant. And okay. the actual vision for the church is the thing, what, the first thing that I would say, the, the vision, the name of the church is Mercy Culture. And the vision, the vision for the church is leading people from corporate encounters to daily personal encounters with the Lord. And mm. um, that daily personal encounter part is like, um, the first thing that comes to mind, you know, um, I'm not saying that I never miss a day and there's not a day where I'm like, Lord, I'm just going to sleep in and we'll hang <laughs> sure. out later on today. You know, I'm not saying that never happens. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is that pursuit, the daily mm -hmm. pursuit to encounter God, um, mm -hmm. to, to know him, to talk to him, to be with him. You know, I think uh, a dangerous thing about, being a Christian today as a millennial is we have so much access to preaching, teaching yeah. resources, Bible app, whatever, all these things yeah. that will shoot us a scripture every morning that will give us a sermon clip, two minute sermon every day, all these things. Mm -hmm. And I think a major danger that we're in is that we can substitute Christian mm -hmm. resources for daily personal encounters with God mm -hmm. and there's no substitute. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's not enough sermons that you can listen to in a day that can substitute spending mm -hmm. time with God. It's so not true. the same thing, you know? And so yeah. uh, that's the first thing I would say is just like, um, I, I had, I was think my, my pastor now was my youth pastor when I was little and, okay. you know, he was, that was his thing way back then when he was my youth pastor was like, spend time with God every day, you know, like be yeah. with the Lord. And so I remember just making that a priority and a goal in my life was like, I have to be with him every day. No mm -hmm. relationship, even in the natural works. If you don't talk to that person every day, it's not real. You know what I mean? 100%, like, I don't yeah. want to be in a relationship like that where we can wait a week <laughs> before we talk again. I don't want that. That's the <laughs> birds, you know? And so even in the spirit realm, like, I, I believe God, he desires that. He, he wants to talk to us every day. And so yeah. I remember as a young girl, like, making that a priority. Like, every day I'm going to try to be with him. Even if it's not this glorious time where, like, like gold dust falls in my room and it's right and like crazy stuff <laughs> happening or something crazy. Like, even if it's not like that, yeah. I'm just going to try every day mm. to just be with them, to just talk to them mm. and make space for them in my day, you know, uh, first thing in the, in the day, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's one thing that I would say has been a, a discipline that has changed my life. Yeah. Um, I can feel the days when I don't do that. I can feel the difference between uh, mm -hmm. of, of joy of, my ability to be present with people, my ability to love people. I, I you yeah. know, because all that happens out of the overflow anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I can only love people in my daily life out of the overflow of my encounter and my time with God. So if mm -hmm. I don't have time with God, I'm, I'm scraping stuff out the bottom of the barrel to love the person in front of me. And I don't want to do that to the people around yeah. me, you know? And yeah. um, 
I mean, yeah, it's just not cool. And so anyway, but that daily personal encounter thing, I think is, is a major, it's a big deal to me, personal discipline. And the second thing I would say is just journaling. I just mm. think journaling is really important. Um, whether it's when you wake up in the morning, writing your dream out, first thing, the dream, night dreams that you have, or yeah. whether that's just writing about your day, whether that's when you know, the Lord speaks to you or you get prophetic words or whatever it is, however God speaks, you know, in your life, writing yeah. it down, stewarding God's voice in our lives um, mm. is important. Whatever he's showing you in the word, you know, writing it down. Yeah. It, I think it's a, it is a picture of stewardship in our mm. lives. You know, it's a, it's a picture of stewarding God's voice. It's, it's us saying, God, we want more. I'm going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to show you that it's valuable. I'm going to write it down because mm. my brain could forget it. Like hmm. my mind can't be a good steward of that word that you just yeah. spoke to me. So I'm going to show yeah. you that it's valuable to me and write it down so I could go back to it and read it again. Um, hmm. So that's like a, another personal discipline of mine. It's just journaling. Yeah. Um, I, last, last thing I'll say about this, like I, uh, I mean, unless you have another question about it, but I was reading in Proverbs last week and I'm working on a, uh, I'm working on a devotional for creatives right now from the book of Proverbs. Mm. And I was working on it last week and um, the Lord began to speak to me about discipline. And uh, it's a long story, but basically what he told me was uh, discipline is uh, a, a daily response to wisdom, um, mm. a consistent response to wisdom. And, uh, and it's like, it is wisdom to spend time with God. It's wisdom to journal because we can't remember things. It's wisdom to yeah. take care of our bodies. And so, like, if you look at it like that, the things that are wisdom, discipline is our ability every day to choose wisdom. To say, mm. I'm going to choose wisdom today. Yeah. I'm going to journal today. Yeah. I'm going to spend time with the Lord. I'm going to respond mm. to wisdom, you know. Mm. And, um, and so I just think spending time with God and uh, journaling, I think they're wisdom. And so I, I try to be disciplined in it, responding to that wisdom every yeah. day of my life, you know. So good. A consistent response to wisdom. That's really good. Um, Jasmine, you're phenomenal. And I just am thankful for the way that you steward your gift in the Lord and your relationship with God because mm -hmm. it's, it's so impactful. So thank you. I keep thanking you, but I just, <laughs> I really want you to hear that from my heart, truthfully. Um Switching back to kind of like what you're doing with music, mm -hmm. what are some exciting things you have coming up this year or even next year that you're excited about looking forward to? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I have a, some singles that are on the way, some songs that I've been working on. Um, and I, I'm just really excited about the new material that's coming out. You know, I, yeah. uh, I haven't really, outside of this last single that I released in January, I haven't really released like an, a full length album since like 2014, 2013, okay. something like that. I, I released yeah. an album called Live at the Pittsburgh Winery, but that was just a live concert that just got recorded. I haven't really released an album in a while with like, mm -hmm. new material. And so I'm just like really excited about the new songs, the singles. So I'm going to be releasing singles throughout the rest of the year. And then awesome. my, uh, my hopes is to start working on a full length album at the end of this year, early 2020, and release something in, like fall of 2020 is kind of the goal. Very cool. So, uh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. So, this is a final question for you something I ask all of my guests. Uh -huh. You know, this Millennials in Ministry podcast is designed for millennials who want to make an impact in their community. Mm -hmm. Ministry doesn't just mean church, but whatever your hand finds to do to make impact and to build the kingdom of God. So, yeah. I want to ask you. You know, what's one piece of advice you would give to other millennials who want to make an impact in their community? Oh, um, loaded question. Um, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I mean, my number one answer to that is always going to be spend time with the Lord. Uh, mm -hmm. Daily encounters with God. We can't do anything outside of the presence of God. You know, uh, Moses said, uh, God, I won't go unless you come with me. He got it. He understood it. Like we can't go. And I, and I, uh, it's just a scary place to be, to have so, such access to so many resources to like, cause we can think that we're growing and be growing mm. here and, and not be actually close to the father. Um, mm. 
uh, there's a passage in Samuel and in, in, a passage about Samuel that really um, is very intriguing to me. I think it's in First Samuel, and it and it talks about how um, it's maybe chapter three or four, somewhere in there. There's a couple spots where it says it says that Samuel uh, it says that he grew in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. It says that he ministered uh, in the presence of God. It says that he grew in, in, in favor with God and with man. Uh, yeah. But then in the next chapter, in the whole the dialogue that's going between uh, Samuel and Eli, there's a really interesting verse. And it says that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Mm. So interesting to me. And so yeah. what that implies is that you could be growing in ministry. Mm. You could be ministering. And you could be growing in favor and not know <laughs> God. Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And um, there's yeah. a, another passage, I think it's in Matthew, that says, you know, that people will come to, come to the Father and say, hey, I prophesied in your name. I did this. I did that. I did this. And it's going to be like, but I, I never knew you. Like, who are you again? You know? And yeah. and that that word in that verse is the same word that was used when Mary responded to the angel and said, the angel said, you're going to have this child. And Mary said, uh, but I, I haven't known a man. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. word of intimacy. It's a, mm-hmm. word of, it's a word about intimacy. It's the same word that God said when he said, I never knew you. It's the same wow. word. It's about intimacy. Wow. And so it's just the scary thing that we can be in ministry. We could like be doing all this stuff and be impacting, impacting the world for the kingdom, doing things for God and not be doing yeah. things with God. There's just, there's just mm-hmm. no difference. And so um, I, I think that would probably be that. That's for sure <laughs> my my number one word of advice for us, for myself included. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's not do things for God. Let's do things with God. You know, there's a big difference, and uh, yeah. it would just suck to do all these things for Him and then He say, "I never knew you." Um, yeah. So we got to stay connected to the Father. We got to spend time with Him. Um, we got we got to be with Him. You know, and, and that's the only place that uh, it's the only place the only thing that makes our ministry sustainable. Um, mm. You know, there's everybody's concerned with, and this is actually, I'm, I'm releasing another one of those clips uh, this week. And this is actually, I'm giving you a sneak peek of it. This is what we're going to be talking about. Okay. But it's, um, it's the only thing that makes our ministries sustainable. It's, it's the presence of God. It's character, which comes from his presence only. Like mm. we got this thing where we want to focus on our skills and like our resources and the hustle and like doing all this stuff. And at yeah. the end of the day, you can have all these crazy gift things and not have an ounce of character and not have a relationship with the Lord and mm-hmm. nothing of your ministry be sustainable because you didn't wow. have character or a relationship with God. But you can yeah. do some cool stuff, but it, yeah. it, won't, it can't last. It can't be eternal if you're yeah. doing it outside of God and outside of character, yeah. the character of God, you know? And um, so, yeah, I'm going to sit down now and stop talking about it. <laughs> That was great. That was really, really good. So if people, Jasmine, want to stay in touch with you and follow you along in your journey of all of this writing and everything, what's the best way for them to stay in touch with you? For sure. Uh, uh, Jasmine Tater Tot, that's my name on, on Instagram. Uh, I would say that's the best way right now. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. I have a website. Uh, kind of. I, I try to keep my, my page up to date with any concerts, worship, conferences any of that kind of stuff uh you can also find okay. it on my website uh, my music is on itunes spotify amazon title yeah. you can get those places anywhere you listen to music you can find my music but uh instagram is the best way to just connect on a more personal level so okay cool well jasmine thank you so much for being a part of this episode it was a blessing to have you I learned so much, very encouraged. And I know so many people are leaving so many comments, guys. Thanks for joining us live and just, you know, being a part of this conversation. So Jasmine, thank you. And uh, definitely just be cheering you on, supporting you and and watching as the Lord continues to work in your life. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I love being with you. And uh, thanks for what you're doing with this podcast. It's awesome. Yeah, no problem. We'll stay in touch. Okay. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.